This is Glenn Schwartzberg from InterRail Consulting, and today I'm going to talk about what is Oracle Analytics Cloud, or OC. And it says in 2019, on March 17th in 2017, when OAC first came out, I had created a Play It Forward video, and enough has changed I thought that I should update it with the latest and greatest information. So what is Oracle Analytics Cloud, or OAC? Well, it's an advanced analytic platform that includes data visualization, both in the cloud and on the desktop, SBase, and BI Cloud Service. So it's not a single product, but it really is a platform that includes multiple products to use to do your analysis and your data visualization and your BI in whatever way you want. You basically choose what of those products you want to enable and how you want to use them. So it's offered as a platform as a service or pass, and it's changed considerably from when it first came out. Now it is an Oracle managed instance, which means that Oracle manages the upgrades and patching. They manage the system backups for you. They've made it very simple to start up an instance. It's a one screen setup per instance. You basically tell it how big you want it and it will set it up for you in a very quick amount of time, about 20 minutes. It is subscription based and it's got unlimited users in it. So you, it doesn't care if you have one user or if you have 10,000. It really is based on the OCPUs or Oracle Compute Units that you select. So you can select to have four, eight, 12, 32, whatever you want, and you're going to be charged based on the usage of those OCPUs. There are three environment types. First, we have standard. And you want to use standard if you're going to be just doing data visualization in the cloud. Data visualization allows you to have self-service and it allows you to have that collaboration. With all of these additions, you also get data visualization desktop. So you can also have single user, single use data visualizations available. The second version is called the S-Space version. So it includes everything that you get in the standard edition, and it also includes SBase, which is the leading analytics platform around. I'm a little bit biased because I've been doing SBase since about 1992. And then finally, you get the Enterprise Edition. Now, the Enterprise Edition really gives you BI, or business intelligence. It also includes Day by Day, which is an interactive mobile app, kind of picture of it on the right-hand side. And it also gives you what used to be called BI Publisher. They're now calling it Pixel Perfect Reporting. So let's talk about the components. First, we have SBase. SBase is based on the latest technology. It's based on SBase 12C, which is a Java-based engine now. It supports aggregate storage, block storage, and also a fully functional hybrid edition. If you work with on-prem right now, it's a limited version of hybrid. It is now completely functional. All of the cubes are Unicode enabled, so we get rid of the eight character limitations for naming, all of that good stuff. If you want to migrate from on-prem, there's a special lifecycle management utility available that will quickly and easily migrate all of your applications up to the cloud. I can do an application in just a few minutes. The configuration and substitution variables are now very flexible for you. It has a simplified security model. It also allows us to have runtime substitution variables from SmartView so we can pass parameters. And there's even a new smart calculation engine that uses the runtime substitution variables so we can limit the calculation to specific intersections and we can speed up our calculations even more. So in designing cubes, there are two ways to do it. First, we have the cube designer add-in for Smart View, and we can take spreadsheets and send them to SBase for analysis in mere minutes. In addition, there's a new web-based user interface that allows us to do everything that we used to do in the on-prem EAS. It's just a much nicer, not cleaner implementation. We also have sandboxes and scenario management. So we can create 
lightweight sandboxes and by lightweight I mean it only stores the changes so we take care of less storage. I can run calculations against them and I can merge them back into my main data or delete them when I'm done based on what I want to do and the security that I have available to me. Along with sandboxes we have a new scenario management ability so we can basically assign those sandboxes to users. Those users become the owners of them and they can add other people for collaborations and it allows for an approval process to allow them to select or reject what people have put into them. The second product that we have is data visualization and I like to consider data visualization as a self-service data discovery tool. It allows users to create connections and data sources to multiple different types of things and it has machine learning and artificial intelligence already built into the product so it can help you figure out things about your data. As I said, it supports multiple data sources. I think right now there's about 32 data sources that it supports in addition to flat files. In it, we also have the ability to create data flows, and this allows us to do simple or complex connections of our data to other data. So for example, if I have a relational table that has my customers in it, and I have a spreadsheet that has maybe demographic information, I can link the two of those together using a data flow and uh, basically output it to either a stored table within data visualization or I can store it in an S-Base cube. And within the data flows, if you look at the picture at the bottom, we also have the ability to do things like training our data flow. And this is for machine learning. So we have the ability to have the data visualization learn about our data itself and give us suggestions about the data. Data visualization has rich visualizations. So it's customizable. You can create your own visualizations. You can use the 20 or so that come shipped with it, have multiple canvases, have multiple palettes of information, and you can use it both on the cloud and on your desktop. Now, if you want to have something that is more formal in delivery, where it's pre-created content and maybe some selectability, we have business intelligence. And it allows us to do analyses and create pre-set up dashboards that have a rich set of charts, have pivot tables, have tables in them, and we can have all of that with a myriad of different type of interactive prompting. Check boxes, radio buttons, drop down lists, type in lists, you name it. You can get all sorts of things. In addition, we can also do federated reporting from multiple sources in here. So I could have data coming from an S-based cube, and when I get down to a certain point, I might want to see the data from a relational database. So doing so, I can create what we call either a federated report or master detail linking, where I click on a cell on the top of my dashboard, and it gives me detail below from a different data source that's associated with that data. With it, I can do drill down and drill across, use all sorts of smart navigation links in order to guide the user on their path through the discovery of their data. So with that, I tried to make this very short. In a nutshell, that's what's happening with OAC in 2019. It's a great product. It's getting better every day. If you have any questions, email me and I'll be happy to answer them. Have a great day.